In a previous video, we discussed 3D waves and how they interfere. In this video, we're going to build on this knowledge and talk about how atomic orbitals, 3D waves of a single atom, combine to make molecular orbitals, 3D waves with two nuclei. The lowest energy atomic orbital is essentially a spherical 3D wave with a nucleus and a node at the center. This lowest energy spherical atomic orbital with one nucleus is called 1s. It's important to remember that atomic orbitals are the shapes that they are because there's only one nucleus. When two atomic orbitals combine, they produce new shapes. 1s orbitals can be in phase or out of phase. Let's take a closer look at the in phase atomic orbitals. When the two atoms are very far apart, the 1s orbitals do not interfere with each other. But what happens as we bring them closer together? At a certain distance, the two orbitals start to overlap. What do you expect to happen when these two orbitals, 3D waves, start to overlap in phase? As we know, 3D waves that overlap with each other in phase will add together to make a larger wave. This is called constructive interference. Which of the following sketches depicts the result of the in phase interference? When two 1s orbitals are in phase, they combine to form an elliptically shaped, long electron wave around the two nuclei. If we rotate this wave around its nuclear axis, we can see it has cylindrical symmetry. A wave with cylindrical symmetry is called a sigma wave. Notice, however, that the two waves don't completely overlap to make them a big sphere. They stop coming together at some point. The parts that overlap in phase will add together by constructive interference, but the rest of the waves will not be affected. That's why we get an elliptical shaped wave. What stops the atoms from coming even closer and overlapping completely to make a big sphere? When two 1s orbitals combine, they don't form a sphere because the positive charges of the nuclei repel each other. Instead, they form this shape, which is called a sigma 1s wave. Notice that the sigma wave is larger than the 1s waves that combine to make it. What does that mean about the relative energies of the sigma 1s and 1s waves? Larger wavelength means lower in energy, so this larger sigma 1s wave is lower in energy than the smaller 1s waves from which it's made. Now let's look at what happens when atomic orbitals overlap out of phase. Which of the following sketches best represents the result of the two 1s orbitals overlapping out of phase? As we saw in a previous video, when two waves overlap out of phase, they experience destructive interference. But the repulsion of the nuclei means that they won't overlap completely. The parts of the waves that overlap out of phase will cancel, but the rest of the waves will not be affected. So this part of the waves will cancel, producing a new nodal plane. The result is that when two out of phase 1s orbitals combine, they form an elliptical, long, cylindrically symmetric orbital with a nodal plane between the nuclei. Any orbital with a nodal plane between the nuclei is called an antibonding orbital, and we denote that with the star next to its name. Which of the following is a good name for this orbital? This molecular orbital is called sigma star 1s. This molecular orbital has a smaller wavelength than the sigma 1s orbital, so it's higher in energy. Actually, it's even smaller in size than the original 1s orbitals, which makes the sigma star 1s antibonding orbital the highest energy of these waves. So when two 1s orbitals overlap in phase, the result is a sigma 1s bonding orbital. And when two 1s orbitals overlap out of phase, the result is a sigma star 1s antibonding orbital. One final note about how atomic orbitals overlap. The nature of electrons dictates that when atomic orbitals overlap, they do so both in and out of phase at the same time. That means that when two 1s orbitals overlap, you'll get two molecular orbitals, both sigma 1s and sigma star 1s. The 1s atomic orbitals that existed when there was only one nucleus around are now gone, and in their place we now have two new nuclear molecular orbitals.